recently took Blueberry out on a road trip to Montana, about 1,800 miles. I took most of my stuff out, but I wanted to put a few things back in just so you could see how I organize everything. Um, up here in the passenger seat, I kept my five gallon thing of water and I had some bins like this stacked up and then a big bag of shoes that I kept up there. Um, I use a JBL speaker to play some music because this is a little bit older. It just has a CD player. Uh, this is Bruce the Moose. And then in the back, we have this mat that I got at a Goodwill for a dollar. I was looking at getting a rug or something, um, but I figured it was going to get pretty dirty in here. So when I saw this, I knew that that would work really well to be able to easily wipe things off of or if it got wet. And then here is the bed. For some reason, I didn't take much video of the build for it um, for some reason. So this is, this is it. I have my skis over there and my nice full blanket that I think makes everything look so much nicer. <laughs> Back here I have the spare tire because we can't find a place to put it under the van and I've got some of my my snow gear and then when I had this full I had another big bag here and some smaller bags up there. But I just wanted to show you how the bed works. I watched a lot of YouTube videos of other people's setups specifically in the Toyota Sienna vans and I went back and forth on what to do. Obviously I don't need a full size bed since it's just me and what was important for me was to have a bed but to also have the dual purpose of having like a lounge or a, a seat up an upright seat and so Basically, we just built this platform and cut it so it can hinge up, and I'll show you that in a second. But first off, um, the dimensions were primarily based on these cushions that I already have. So these red cushions were from an outdoor bench that I made, and I used the two of these in the Camparola. And so I just based the width upon those and it's about 24 inches so two feet wide and I use three of these and then I have a one inch deep um, mattress that was from an old cot and put this twin size fitted sheet around it but since a twin size bed is larger or wider than this. I safety pinned it so it would be tight. Um, that way it doesn't bunch up right here and that works out really well. Um, as for the the bed part, so these are the the shades uh, for the windows. I'll show you in a, in a minute. But this platform I should show it right here. This platform um, is about, it's 75 inches long and it's a, off of the floor 9.5 inches. And that was basically, I just laid down with the cushions to see how long I would need it to be. I'm 5'11", so 75 inches is obviously longer than I am, but it's fine. And then the 9.5 inches off of the, the floor was because to factor in the cushions and then to be able to sit up where I don't hit my head on the roof. So that's why the dimensions are what they are. But as you can see this hinge, piano hinge, we basically just cut the plank right here, put the hinge on it right here, and then I have another hinge over here so I can open this up for storage. It's also open, as you can see, like right here, it's open on the side, so I could pull things out on the side, but I usually have bulkier items in here and they're too large to pull out from the side. 
So, but one thing I, I noticed real quick that I will have to change is that this is heavy to hold up when I'm digging around with one hand. So if I could just uh, drill a hole and have a rope or something to pull it up um, and hang it off of something over there uh, to help me hold it up, which is what we did for the back. And I'll show you that later. But as for right now, all I have in here are my sleeping bags. This is my Mont Bell zero degree sleeping bag. And I love this. This is great. Um, and then I have another sleeping bag that is for when it's a little bit warmer. And I'll, sh I'll pull this out so you can see how, how lofty it is. Oh, my arm's getting tired just holding this up. Um, and then I have my backpack. Usually I have more stuff in here, obviously, but I took most of the stuff out because um, I'm house and pet sitting right here. So, um, so let me, I'll raise it up so you can see what it looks like when it's in lounge mode. And it's really basic. I'm always about like, what's the easiest solution? I think a lot of people try to get really fancy and you know, hey, if they have the time and the money, whatever floats your boat. But for me, I am a very frugal person and I like to reuse things that I already have and get things at thrift stores secondhand. And so I always try to find the simplest solution. So for this, I basically just, boy, have this piece of wood that I put in the platform and it holds itself up and that's all you have to do like we thought we would have to make um, some kind of attach some pieces of wood to hold it in place but it holds itself in place because it's long enough um, if I wanted it to be adjustable kind of like a beach lounger is kind of what I was basing it upon um, then you would have to have different notches um, to have different heights. So if if um, if I had a notch, I could make it completely 90 degrees. Or this is just the natural um, angle that it rests where the the piece of wood hits the platform. And that'll make sense once you see the video from the from the back. But I'll sit up here so you can see what it's like. As you can see, that's really nice. And I guess my hair hits the ceiling, but my head, um, I still have some room. I'm reading, working on the computer. So it's really comfy. And uh, this is the sleeping bag. Look at that loft. <laughs> so, um, I usually just leave the wool blanket down and then I'll sleep in the bag. And so far on my trip, I've slept in three degree weather in the van, so, and I was fine. I usually just cover my head completely um, because the thing that keeps me awake is if my face, my nose in particular, is cold. So, um, I also have a string of LED lights around here. I had that in my Camperola as well. And all it's held up, again, easiest solution, paper clips. <laughs> I just have paper clips like hooking into the plastic bits of the van and that works out fine. And then as you could see, I also had my, I found these battery powered candles at thrift stores for like a dollar and it gives me a little, some mood lighting. And oh, I also have some other lights in here. Um, battery came out. And this one, I usually just hang off of that hook. And then I also have another light. And then I have a headlamp as well. And I find that that's really all the light I need. When I have the shades up, it gets really dark in here. And it's, it's really nice and I sleep really well compared to the Camperola that didn't have any window shades 
and parking at Walmarts, you know, the lights can keep you up because <laughs> I like to have like pitch dark. And for the front, I'll show you what I do for the front next. See, this is how the strings are held up just by paper clips. That's all you need. But first, I'm going to show you how I put this Reflectix in the window. And this just help, helps with some insulation. Um, these windows, luckily, are pretty easy. So I just slide these in right here and just kind of tuck it in as best I can. Obviously there is still some gaps there, but that's okay. And I already had the sunshade, so sometimes I'll just stick that up there just to give it, I don't know, a little bit extra. <laughs> so I'll show you th from the outside what that looks like. And these are the ones for the back windows. This is an old repurposed window shade that I cut up and I experimented with using this black contact paper to give it more of an opaque view from outside because cars can still see that silver from outside, especially like when your lights hit it. It reflects obviously, but it's, it's used more for insulation purposes and using the contact paper kind of doesn't help with that so obviously it's better normally but I can only use one hand so that's how it works and I'll show you from the outside how different the silver looks compared to the black and this is what it looks like with the curtain I decided I didn't want to make reflectix for the front windows um, and just do a curtain and obviously there's a gap here, but I find that when I lay down um, I can't see out and so nobody else could see in and again, this is very basic This is just a black fabric. I found at a thrift store for a dollar and I have some rope that I had laying around and binder clips and paper clips <laughs> So it's very very basic, but it works all right, and here we have the back. As you can see, the nice pretty garland. Um, but I can just take that off when it gets in the way. And this, we came up with just drilling a hole, putting a piece of rope there. And <laughs> Jerry rigged this carabiner and an old tent stake. And I just hook it up to here and it holds it up. Um, obviously, I could lean against that inside, but that's only because the gate's up. But I have that just so I'm able to access this stuff and pull things out. So I keep a cooler in here, and normally when I was on the road trip, I had another cooler that was tucked in right here, but I found that I wasn't able to prop up my bed with that cooler there because it got in the way. So this is all I do to prop up the bed. Obviously I'm gonna take that off. This is really difficult with one hand. But as you can see, it just uses the, the platform to hold it up. You don't have to do anything else because that just holds it in place like that. Oh, I was going to show you the difference between the windows. So you can see this is the silver reflectix and that is the black contact paper. So definitely the black looks better. <laughs> um, it's more stealth because that'll reflect headlights if they're shined on them, but it is what it is. So there we have 
Blueberry Vanillos tour. Here we go. This is the only video I have of the build. This is before we put the piece of plywood on top. And as you can see, those two legs sit down where the seats can stow.